Mr. O'Flynn, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll try and be a bit briefer than some of the extremely expansive contributions we've had in the last three and a half hours. Uh, this uh, working document, I thank the rapporteur for, is what is known in my country as a curate's egg i.e. good in parts. Um, we have the observation at the start that so basically monetary policy uh, was pushed to the European level uh, when the Eurozone was created, but fiscal policy was left mainly in the hands, or so it was said, uh, of the national governments. But of course, uh, this is then said to, uh, to have been a framework lacking with today's insight, as if it's only the experience of the last few years which have shown uh, the deficiencies. But, of course, the Eurosceptic case against the Eurozone uh, at the time was just this, that you can't have uh, a currency union within, with uh, tw sort of 17 different fiscal policies going on at the same time. And we now know from Mr Draghi that it's not just coordination of fiscal policy that he wants, but coordination of labour market policies, even education policies. Uh, the most interesting bit of the report, though, of the working document, I think, is the recognition of democratic deficit. We had, um, in the inception of the Eurozone, for mo most member states, uh, the people were never consulted uh, in a referendum, and now we're pushing on to another level of coordination uh, and, uh, and union on the, on the fiscal side, the political side. Uh, there's a further level of democratic deficit being built on the shakiest of foundations uh, anyway. So I'm very interested in what's happening in Italy where the Five Star Party is pushing for a referendum to allow the, the Italian people to decide whether they're really willing to subscribe to the rules that will make a currency union work. And I understand from, uh, from the European level that there is a need to coordinate these things in a currency Union, uh, so the people must decide, and I, I would recommend all the other countries of the Eurozone give their own people the right to make this decision in a referendum, because only then will you have the political will uh, among the member states to, uh, to subscribe to the rules that are necessary uh, for the Eurozone to work. Uh, as an economic entity, and you may end up with uh, 17 members, you may up with, end up with, with one member or no members, I don't know. But the people have never been asked in most of these member states, uh, and until they are asked, uh, the danger is almost that the European level uh, gets to be the scapegoat for deficiencies in some national economies. And, and uh, when the European level is always seen to be imposing policies which are leading to falling living standards or higher youth unemployment or whatever it might be, uh, then that really sows the seeds of dissension across Europe. What we need, therefore, is the democratic deficit argument to be addressed and the peoples in these member states honestly told the implication of belonging to a current currency union and deciding whether they are willing to live within that, uh, within that belt, within those constrictions, because if they are not, then the, the, the logical and the best democratic solution is, and perhaps the best economic solution too, is to return to uh, national currencies and the ability to appreciate or appreciate uh, uh, the exchange rate as according to particular economic conditions. And I think that this is the core of the problem facing the European Union, and until until the democratic deficit uh, is addressed, uh, there will be no fundamental leap forward. Thank you.